What is going on? You are watching, listening to Tags Live, aka Talk About Gay Sex, the live Wednesday night version, episode 311. And no, if you're watching this, you are definitely seeing double. I hope that means because you <laughs> also have a cocktail <laughs> alongside Cody Maurice Doggett. How the hell are you? Hello, darling. It's so good to be in the same room as you. I'm, I really came for the Adam Adam toy box. Oh, yes. Right <laughs> next to you on the left over there. Yeah. So we got to get to that, honey. After we we work, will. So. Double for your trouble tonight. Yes. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, actually, um, we are going to talk a little bit about that because we just started a whole promotion right now where yep. if you write in DM us at Tags Podcast on Instagram or simply email us we and give us your sex conundrums or relationship advice, we will give you the solicited version of our advice, all hey. us hosts. We just started the promotion and you will get an Adam's Toy Box in the mail, courtesy of Adam's Toy Box, where you also get 20% off all of their toys right now by just using our promo code tags. Nice. But thanks to you guys for your questions. We've got some more coming in next week. I already got some juicy ones coming. Really excited. I can't wait. This is I love that part because yes. the people write in and you get to just engage with them and it's so much fun yeah and that's what all this is about interaction yeah. uh and i just think you know whenever you can have a third year or three or four hey why not <laughs> why not so definitely take advantage of that while supplies last so of course we're always giving advice yes on also news of tags uh if you notice today if you're watching this i've got my tags podcast nifty tank top with our cool so logo cute. and like i said i love our logo because it's 2.0 for us because our old one said talk about gay sex this one's kind of cool it's got the rainbow flag on there but it's tags and it does say it's a podcast so mm -hmm. those in the know will get it it makes right yep those that don't you have something to share That's what's hey what's tags <laughs> don't worry about it or Talk about, hey, yeah. talk about gay sex. Hey, talk about gay sex. That's right. You can get all the merch, including this. Uh, there's teas, hoodies, mugs, stickers, on and on and on in the various colors we've got going for you. Love Blue, it. purple, white, on black. And go to tagspodcast.com and look for tags merch. Well, happy Wednesday to you. Happy look Wednesday. at our look at these cocktails. Cheers. They're Cheers. gorgeous and they taste amazing. Yeah. Thank you, well, you know, it's Halloween week. Very exciting. We were talking about it on the show the other day, Tags Podcast the other day, on how exciting it is that Halloween is here. And I think so many of us are celebrating. You were sharing yes. what your costume is going to be. And tell us again. I'm a Thundercat. Thundercat. I'm Panthro from the Thundercats. And my boyfriend, Joe, he's going to be Lionel. Right. And we, Lincoln and I did not know what they were. And you told us a little bit more. You were telling me a little bit more offline that, and I love this education that I've been getting yeah. about superheroes and comics. And in this particular case, you were saying that it started as a cartoon yes. first From and the then 80s. became a comic, which yes. is fascinating because we always think it goes the other direction. Yeah. Oh, for sure. But this one started out as a cartoon in the 80s. I love oh, 80s. It. Wow. Yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. All right. I, I love the cartoon. I, every every episode I had to be, make sure I was there right after school or Saturday morning, I had to make sure I was there to watch my Thundercats. Wow. So when my boyfriend brought up the idea, I was like, Cosine. That oh, is he brought it up. He brought it up. Did you make him watch? Because you were telling me offline he's not totally Mr. Comic Book. He's not. Have you gotten him a little bit more into them? No. Oh. <laughs> but yet it was his idea. <laughs> but it was his We Because we couldn't decide. I came up with some ideas. He came up with some ideas. And we couldn't agree on anything. But <laughs> I mean, that's I the love way it goes that because but... it kind of worked in your favor. You did something. You put something in his cocktail I did. I put to it... make him think. <laughs> My Thundercat juice. I put it in his cocktail. <laughs> Here's a little tidbit that I don't even know if you knew. But did you know, because we had one of our longtime listeners, Corey Harmon, who's been on the show before. We love Corey. Corey. Shout out to you, Corey. Hi, Corey. Yes. And did you know that 
he was so excited we were talking about the Thundercats uh-huh. that the original uh panthro wh- which is who you're gonna be that's me yeah was voiced by a gay black man i did not obviously in the 80s they didn't me. talk about this I mean, of course no but isn't that cool when you told me i was so surprised and thank you for yeah. that tidbit of knowledge Corey. because yeah. now that i know i googled him and guess who guess who it is you're gonna know oh who because he is he was also the father on the cosby show wait that would be Bill. B- not uh, Bill Cosby's father. Sorry. Okay. Yes. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I know his face and I know his acting. And I was oh. like, that man is, I could not believe. Like, Do we have a name on him? Knew. I have it here, actually. His name is Earl Hyman. And I put gay in there. <laughs> in my Google search. I see. I'm looking at your notes over here. <laughs> By the way, when I... We prepare for these shows a little bit more on Wednesday, and it's always fun being in the same room with Cody because he really gets his notes together. I went and got some more sushi, or I was like making cocktails, and he's typing away, I typing really away. Well, and anyway, he was chatting with me. And I, I was, was chatting. Like, and I was like, "But girl, I need to get my my notes together." Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, speaking of Halloween, it, like we said, it's the week of Halloween here in the states. We are going to be talking about Dia de los Muertos in just a second. Yeah. But there's this great story that I totally agree with. And it's entitled by Cock and Cocktails, Wishing You a Horny Halloween with the Sluttiest of Outfits. Here's a quote for you. Halloween is the one year a girl can dress like a slut and nobody else can say anything about it. And you know who said that? Regina George. (laughs) I asked Cody, do you know who Regina George is? And I said, yeah, of course I know who Regina George is. Who's Regina George? She's from Mean Girls. She's the the main antagonist. Okay, yes. Rachel McAdams. Yes. I had to look it up. So here's how crazy I am. I was looking up the story and I said, oh, I should probably figure out who Regina George is. Mm -hmm. And taking this article from Cock and Cocktails, which I believe is out of Britain, I was thinking, oh, because oftentimes they'll quote people in Europe. Yeah. So I thought, oh, it's got to be like a total British social media star or somebody that I totally don't know, but I should probably know who we're quoting. And I look it up and all that came up was Rachel McAdams (laughs) in Mean Girls. And I'm like, okay, I'm totally take my gay card away. I know, right? I was like, take it. What? Give give it to me now, girl. When was the last time you saw Mean Girls? Because I know you've had. To we see were it. talking about this, and I think I said I saw it like a good gay when it first came out. Okay. But I was one of those that yeah, it was you have cute. To watch it, it was every cute. single year okay, to renew now. your gay card. And Lincoln, our co-host, <laughs> saw the the Broadway musical, and I thought oh. I could skip it, but I'm sure. <laughs> I don't know, but that's, I could skip it. Yeah. (laughs) I'm just, it's always one of those things that I'm always kind of late to the table too. And I didn't know that, but I love that quote. We were talking about it on tags podcast the other day on how we all ultimately let's just be real. This show's about truth. Y'all it sure it's going to be coming up a lot. How truthful are you in general to yourself, to the public, to your friends and family and I have to say, we were truthful the other day when we said we agreed with this quote. We didn't say slutty, but we said <laughs> sexy. But ultimately, I think we mean slutty. And there's this great, I'm going to post this on tagspodcast.com because essentially they put together a slew of people that have posted the sexiest, hottest pictures of Halloween costume, most oh. of them iconic. And really hot. Let's just start with Jason. So hot. I'm sorry, uh, Michael Myers. Oh, and yeah. I can't believe I said Jason because I've been watching Halloween. I just got distracted by yeah. his There's... huge, bulky okay. muscles. So you all know Halloween. Yeah. And if you've been listening to the show, I've been making, like, watching all of them from the original 1978, original Halloween. Okay. Oh, we're talking about Jamie Lee Curtis. Yes. I my favorite one beyond that one is Halloween H two O. Oh, really? Yeah, it was really. I love the story. She's a badass in it. It's set in the nineties. Um, and this wasn't Kelly Rowland in that one. Okay, no, but you know who was <laughs> who? is the blonde one from Dawson's Creek. Uh, 
actress. Oh, Michelle Williams. Michelle Williams is the in other it. Michelle she Williams. gets killed. Yes. Does oh, she that really? Michelle. Look at you. <laughs> getting Destiny's Child in there. Not even the right <laughs> even child. The right. <laughs> Get it? Destiny's Child. I got it. <laughs> anyway, Michelle Williams, and she gets killed off, sadly. Oh, Poor Michelle. But there's a few others, and if you follow the slew. Anyways, Mike, Michael Myers is... Um, depicted in one of these, and it's a guy that looks like he's what in the forest, and he's bulked up beyond capacity. Oh, his muscles are huge, hairy ass chest, and just bulked out, naked, grabbing his cop yes, with it. the Michael Myers <laughs> scary ass mask on. And I have to tell you, Cody, when yeah. I saw this, would you out think? of all? I wanted, and you know he's always coming at you with that knife. <laughs> I wanted him to come after me. Oh, what yeah? did you say? Stab me, honey. Stab, stab me. <laughs> he can stab me with something else other than the knife. <laughs> stab me with something else first. <laughs> I just want to climb on this Michael Myers and get stabbed by something. I agree. And you know what I'm talking about. No, we know. But uh, there's another one that I didn't recognize. My um, favorite was Hella. And I, Who's you have, Hella? Hella is from the I Thor so much mythology. Well, about comic books, yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, but Hella is from the Thor mythology, and it's really complicated because in some iteration, she. See, when is, you're explaining something, I you don't know, want to say right? it's really complicated <laughs> it because really you're trying to get us to though. understand. Okay, so in the movies, let's go with that. Okay, thank you. In the movies, she is Thor's sister, but that's not she. The, the Hella, yes. Okay. Yes. But he has this headdress on. Oh, okay. So we're we're merging genders here. I love I mean, that. I, I okay. love a good gender swap. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I kind of want to see what the and thank you for enlarging yes, that for me. I appreciate it. It's really it. hot. <laughs> I really want to see what the rest of his costume looks like. But then again, maybe I don't want to see what the rest of his costume looks like because what I see is very, very sexy. It's really sexy. And you know what? He's not hard in it. He's, He's totally not. naked and I'm in okay the mirror. With it. Got the whole eye makeup black around his eyes. He's got the really cool, what would you call those kind of antlers? Antlers, yes. Yeah, he's got an eight pack packing. Not the biggest stick ever, and I don't mind. I'm it's, okay it's, with it. And I love that. I want to see his ass, though. Yeah, okay. Well, that would be <laughs> something to check out. Um, any others here that were, well, we have to definitely, there's a couple Spider Mans on here. And I have to say, Spider Man is the hottest Spider Man. There's yes, yeah, so there's one on here, and to me, you almost can't go wrong with the Spider Man outfit. I think. Oh yeah, it's been said that a lot of kids always gravitate to the Spider Man. Mm -hmm. It for whatever reason. When I was a kid, I definitely gravitated to Spider Man before, but prior to that was Superman. Okay, but there's something about it. I don't know if it's just the agileness that he has. Okay, we all want to think we're a superhero and and can climb and we're always climbing trees it has something but as an adult like this one i'll, I'll never forget I, we were doing an event with tags podcast and i had just got back from africa and i was all okay. into africa yeah. it was a life-changing vacation mm -hmm. and i was i had taken a lot of pictures of leopards and I decided, well, I want to be a set, of course, a sexy or slutty okay. leopard. So I bought all the accoutrement and you know, leggings, no okay. shirt, the tail, blue eyes, oh. uh, ears, and I was a sexy leopard. I love that. Oh, we were at this event and I dropped everything because I see this super hot guy. He didn't even bother with the mask, uh -huh. but his body was so hot in. So imagine like a body that completely fills covered. out, completely covered, wow. but you know, like this picture, which again, I'll post this His on tagspodcast.com tomorrow. It, if you can fill out, you know, the Lycra, you can fill that out oh, yeah. and you can see everything. You can see everything. Yeah. I have to say <laughs> just walking around the city and seeing while we're in that transition of the weather changing, yeah. I'm seeing a lot of hot bodies just right when I went to get my sushi. Oh, I, and I'm always stopped every now when you went downstairs. Yes. <laughs> and these are real life with you. <laughs> inspirational superheroes, everyday superheroes. And I see everyday superheroes that in my mind they're a superhero. Yeah. And yeah. What are your and is and, and ending thoughts on I this? just have to say, if you have that leopard suit still, there's a Thundercat called Chitara that you could be. Oh, you could have got me in the mix. Ah, uh, you could have been with us. So I, I don't know if you still want to do it. There's still I think time. I got rid of a lot of it. What is your costume again? Okay, right. So yes. 
in honor of slutty in the slutty category. Let's just forget it. We're not being sexy anymore. We're just being <laughs> slutty. We are all, we, you and I am joining you and your crew, and we're going to be going to a huge party here called Elegria. Yes. And I just decided, what do I have? Like, let me just shop in my, I didn't, I should have shopped for the leopard. Okay. But I ended up shopping in my closet. I, a lot of people know I have a huge leather collection and I found yep. an amazing leather apron that somebody made for me, a leather maker. Oh, cool. And I've got these huge high boots and I thought, you know what? I'm going to be a psychotic butcher okay so i bought like this michael myers knife and if you can see right now i've got this butcher oh, knife on my ear <laughs> and i'm gonna just paint my face and i'm gonna be psychotic looking but my butt of course i'm gonna be naked underneath the apron so there you go are we getting in the that's, same cast? I, that's I not even sexy <laughs> that's slutty right well i mean isn't that a good one though that's amazing I do think, and I still think that you should put a white streak in your hair and be Sweeney Todd still. But, but I mean, it's neither here nor there. It's your I decision. I mean, why do you got to make me gray? <laughs> <laughs> Prematurely. I do. Exactly. Uh, no, there will not be any gray in fine. my hair. Fine. I don't know about that. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. All right. Well, let us know what you're going to be. It's an exciting week. And a lot of people may or may not know, but on November 1st and 2nd, always in Mexico, it's the quintessential Dia de los Muertos, one of my favorites. I am Mexican-American, and I just love this holiday because ultimately it is really about celebrating the dead. Mm -hmm. And Mexico has always had a different take on it. Obviously, no one wants to lose anybody. Yeah. But they really celebrate their dead. And it's a whole holiday festival. If you've ever been to Mexico, there's parades in various parts of the, the country mm -hmm. that really honor. And they've got huge skeleton or people that maybe have passed. Yeah. And it's a walking march around. It's just, it's beautiful. And I yeah. love everything. If you know, if you come to my house, you see a lot of skulls. But there is, so, right there. yeah. Yeah. Um, Doritos, the chip company, I of, couldn't believe it, has a me. Day of the Dead commercial with the queer couple, and it's going viral. It's a new cartoon ad for Doritos Mexico, yeah, and it's been released in time for Dia de los Muertos, the Day of the Dead. The commercial was published just last week and got over 2.5 million views on oh, YouTube. Wow. It essentially features a family paying homage, respects to their late uncle who turns up with an unexpected guest. And you watch the commercial. Essentially, it's got this whole family and they're all going through the grave. Mm -hmm. And it's in that, what would you say the style of, what's that famous like movie? like Coco. Coco, right. Yes. So if you imagine those characters, again, I will post this on tagspodcast.com. The family, including the grandmother, mm -hmm. the parents and the children all go out and they're essentially putting flowers or gifts and yeah. what do they put down in front of a, a, a bowl of doritos <laughs> to uncle um uncle alberto, alberto yes uh, <laughs> and so the commercial goes so all of a sudden out of nowhere uncle alberto appears yes. out of the grave again just work with us here uh -huh. and he he's he appears and everyone's like uncle alberto hey, hey. <laughs> and then all of a sudden another man appears behind yep. him and they're like and because it's all in spanish like quien es? who is this and it's turns out it's uncle alberto's partner yeah that, so in other words he found a partner and everyone's like shocked looks on their face and the whole point and then the grandmother the grandma the, who's the sister of uncle alberto at the end says in spanish essentially she says oh i'm so glad you finally you found, found somebody, somebody. So and sweet. the whole point is it's never too late to find that someone yes. essentially is what it's saying. It's so sweet. Which it was so heartwarming. It's so heartwarming. Thank you, Dorito. Thank you, Dorito. I did not know I needed that in my life. And just the fact that the grandmother was like so welcoming. Yeah. To right. The, his, she basically called the man her brother, like, upon seeing him and i was like that's so sweet right and again it's never too late to speak your truth and yeah. i think that's what's always kind of what our theme is that we're going to be talking today on vulnerable voices right yeah. after this next story you guys a top male soccer star john cavallo has come out and he's also made history 
And, you know, a lot of people always come out. This one was really big for me because it's in the soccer, professional soccer, or as many call it, football. Mm -hmm. And in a video on social media, just this Tuesday, Australian soccer player Josh Cavallo came out. He's a midfielder for Adelaide United. And he announced at the beginning of, of this video, there's something personal I need to share with everyone. And he says, I'm a footballer and I'm gay. Wow. Um, he's made history because he is a professional soccer player and he's currently the only out gay soccer player That's in the so world. That's so astonishing to me. He's only 21. Uh -huh. I made you watch the video. I yeah. watched the video. I will post this on tagspodcast.com and I encourage you all to watch his posting because it was beautifully shot. He clearly checked in with a videographer yeah, on how he sure. wanted to do this, which, honey, <laughs> he is gay and he got it right because if I was going to make a major... He's lit. Ma he's lit. <laughs> He's looking, he's looking he's, adorable. He, he's, there's <laughs> dramatic pauses in the coming out process. Oh, yeah. There's shots of him and other things. But you know what? It's The production it's, value is there, honey. honey uh, <laughs> why don't we all have our videographer when we came out to be like, Mom, hold on. And click <laughs> press play with this... In, where I was crying watching this yeah, on it was my so video. Good. You were practically in tears. Yeah, so imagine so, if we all had that I cameraman to shoot that and then play this. Yeah. It would be like it would be so much your own movie. For us. Yeah. yeah. And how could anybody be upset with that? But regardless, he is adorable. And that's not even the point. I think it's monumental. You were saying, I wish, what were you saying? Off I, I said that. I went because so many people are coming out and it's it's always such a public statement and it's always you can always see that it's weighing so heavy on them. Right. So I'm glad he came out because I feel like he got a lot off of his chest and now he's living authentically. Yes. But I, my real concern was like, when is this not going to be an issue? When are we not going to have to come out so publicly as as a as a footballer or yeah. an actor or what have you and right. i feel like nobody should have to go through that turmoil to think that their job is going to be in jeopardy yeah and i was saying to you offline that mm -hmm. until the way i think about it people if he if he's the only one that we yeah. know of that's out and we are about we just talked about on a recent show about national coming out day and yeah. how important that was at least you and I shared stories yeah. about our coming out. And Lincoln, although he's out and proud, mm -hmm. didn't have that necessarily, although he's come out in different ways to friends, family, his work environment, and lives an out life. For sure. Everyone has a different way. And he may have been this um, jo Josh Cavallo out amongst friends. Yes. But imagine if you were in an industry we're talking about soccer as far as i know it's it is global mm -hmm. it reaches international audiences people yeah. are fanatical about it and there's not one person that we can say and when we report time and time again and i often say if we really wanted to we could report on the tremendous amount of hate crimes that are going on daily in our lgbtq plus world for sure this is a big deal and i think what was really beautiful as he went on is that he's got so much support from coaches yes. to team players that have really outpoured and can't always be said about counterpart sports like the NFL necessarily. Ooh, you better I'm read. just saying. <laughs> and soccer or football, as they like to call it. Yes. The real football, as I like to say, <laughs> is you are just out here reading the NFL. I am, today, I you? am, because I just, yeah, and I just think I'm so glad that he made a stamp on and as the first ever. I am too, and it's going to help so many young people out there. Yeah, and but I don't. It just for me, I'm wondering when it's not going to be such an ordeal because I could see in this young man's video how how heavy it was on him. And you can just tell that. Definitely. So, but I felt think the weight of it. We're, which we're about to talk about in Vulnerable Voices about how tr 
how honest and how much of your truth do you really divulge and show? Yes. If that is weighing on you and you're, he said, he talks about in this video, how he was fearful of being, not just being made fun of, mm -hmm. but being ridiculed. And yeah. he could be ridiculed, not just on the team, coaching in his circle, but it could also be on larger platforms, social media, yeah. wherever they travel to, other teammates from other teams. Ugh. And we've all heard of those stories too. That could happen too. So at least to get that, to have, have that fear can often, I think, affect your performance. Oh, for sure. And if it's weighing on you, it ultimately is going to affect your performance, which the team's like, no, no, we support you yeah. because he's clearly good enough to be a pro. Yeah. And I think, yeah, why not? Sometimes speaking our truth is releasing a huge weight off our shoulders I so agree. we can really be our true essence without obstacle in the way. He's going to be lighter on the field. I just know it. A lot lighter <laughs> on the field. Absolutely. Um, all right. Well, we talked to, we talked about this a second ago and we were talking about our vulnerable voices. We haven't done this in a minute. I know we need to, I, I love this segment. I love the segment so much. I'm Me so as well. Back to it. Yeah, absolutely. So we're, we're labeling this, um, how honest are we really? And I thought we could talk a little bit about, so we were just talking about coming out and I just think inherent in many of our stories, Yes, we were telling a lot of them recently on National Coming Out Day is coming out. As, and then we've had more stories. We're going to be talking about intersex, non-binary. Mm -hmm. All these things are show, showing how honest Oftentimes our community, I don't think gets enough credit because yeah. they, we are, we, sometimes we take a little bit longer to find our true essence, oh, yeah. but to really divulge our sexuality too often the world yes. is a huge releasing and showing how honest we are inherent in coming out. I mean, would you not agree with that? I or? totally agree. And yeah. it was kind of tough for me because. I kind of got pulled out. I remember telling my story. So I got my sister kind of pulled me out of the closet a little bit. Right. I still came out to my family after that when I had to explain to them what was going on. So I I acknowledged that I my part in it as well. Um, but the thing that I've always told myself about this and other things is that if someone has the balls to ask me something, mm -hmm. I'm never, ever, ever going to lie because I feel like Hmm. They, if they have the audacity to ask me a question, then they deserve the truth. Right. I've only broke this twice, and I'm not going to tell you when it was. <laughs> uh oh, okay. <laughs> you know, I'll try and pull I know it that out. was your next question. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but I think the hardest part for me about coming out was yeah. really being honest with myself. Mm -hmm. That is the first and and foremost thing that I had to, to who I had to be honest with, because that. I'll tell you, that was the actual first time that I kind of didn't, that what allowed me not to be honest and to break that rule of if somebody has the audacity to ask me a question, then I'm always going to be honest with them. I wasn't being honest with myself first. So then in that, I lied to somebody. Oh, that's interesting. About yeah. And it brings up a whole topic because we were, have one of our bullet points is how honest are we with ourselves? Yes. And I was sharing with you that during the heart of the lockdown, when we were all really having to just be hunkered down in our own spaces, yeah. for me personally, it was a time of a lot of reflection. And two things came to mind when I came up with the topic, how honest are we really? One was age, for sure, is I've noticed at 50, I don't, I always will care what people think. Yeah. Obviously, you can't get away from that completely. But I was much more concerned about that. And with age, I'm less likely to care as much and have as many people around me as yes men. I, I have fewer, closer, curated friends these days. I agree. And those people, I find, the, like, the less I have, the more honest I am and share with those 
hardcore people. I agree with you 100%. We share a heck of a lot on this show. <laughs> <laughs> this show has... And the show makes me be honest, too. I know. That's what I was just about to say. You know, we, yeah, we, yeah. Have you noticed? Because I feel like that I am so much more... Well, you keep me honest a lot, I feel like. Yes. And I feel that I don't want to misrepresent myself to everybody and I would to our friends to our friends that are all, hello boo how you doing <laughs> <laughs> hello darlings right <laughs> so I and I want people to be able to trust that trust in me as, as just as much as I, I trust in them and we it's almost like a symbiosis kind of story yeah. but the, at the end of the day I will say that there are some parts of myself that I keep to myself sure because I do need that. And I that is something that I require for me. So I definitely hold something for myself, but it's just so that I can protect a piece of my life. That, you no, know, and you, that is you don't have to totally to everything, to everything. not at all. And I think the show has been, it's a great bullet point that we didn't even think about when we were preparing for this yeah. is the show is really because when I've listened to podcasts, um, often you'll, if you listen to, say, other podcasts of celebrities yeah. that are on there, you'll notice that sometimes they'll divulge more than they would divulge. They'll divorce, divulge more on a podcast than they would on, say, a TV oh, interview. Yeah. And I think it's because the mic, the radio style of it, and the intimacy of podcasting you don't feel like it's people not, are watching but right. people are watching <laughs> this, this particular one that we're doing a little bit we are on camera and it's a little different but it's still intimate yeah. in many ways it's like kicking with my friend yeah exactly and we've got cocktails <laughs> uh, but i, I learned the cocktails always the help. cocktails always help <laughs> yeah somebody once asked a, a guest was asking me um to be on the sh he wanted to do it in the morning and i said oh no no oh no honey what am i oh, gonna no. have coffee <laughs> <laughs> not happening i mean i drink coffee but no i mean part of this is relaxing you always put baileys in it i oh i could <laughs> i could have a mimosa yeah so maybe i should have this guest on on a saturday or on sunday a, for brunch I, for brunch that's right there you go I'll come over. right and well and truth be told speaking of honesty yes. is this whole podcast we're gonna be celebrating five years in february was uh -huh. in my living room floor inspired by jeremy ross lopez our other host talking about our sex lives mm -hmm. and over cocktails nice. at like three in the morning and realizing that this would be really good and so that's really where the truth came out and t sharing with one of my best friends things that were going on yes. in my and feeling trusted with the friend so yeah. this is just now tanks podcast is just a little bit on a larger platform but it's still Sharing those are friends. yeah and i would say whenever we have guests and we encourage them to write in we will divulge your handler or your name but i i respect you guys and thank you guys for really expressing your conundrums to us and yes. we do honestly take them seriously i put a lot of thought you do. this one really <laughs> does yes we all do but this one in particular i, I have to really say. I, I love well i'm a life coach on also so right. i really i like to look at it from two different angles because i like to look at it from the advice or the reflection that I would like to have on my clients, but I also oh. like to apply it to myself as well. So, oh, I like that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Multifaceted. Yes. Um, what do you think about social media? Because I was saying to you, <laughs> social media, you, we all have sort of like a veneer, a facade of how we present ourselves and yes. what we put forth. And sometimes it's as simple as just a simple picture. But it's maybe it's a picture, but with a filter over it. Yeah. Or, and I think, you know, and that also we can get into a little bit of like the apps on when you if you can recall back when was there anything? Oh, I can remember. Let's first talk about <laughs> social media. What do you think about social media? My life on social media, on Instagram, it's just like, it's very fabulous. <laughs> That's how my life is 24-7. Hello, darling. I love I'm it. I'm Cody Maurice Doggett. Da no, it's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I am very, I present my best self on, yeah. everybody does, on Instagram. Yeah. So I can admit that I definitely tweak my pictures just a little bit. Of course, yeah. I put a little, I put a little, what I do mainly. A glaze. 
<laughs> a gloss. A nice glow on there. <laughs> I put mainly I turpentine. <laughs> I put spackle. I put uh, Vaseline on the lens. Okay, yeah. It's a little, I noticed your pictures seem a little foggy at times. No, I'm, I'm wondering, is Cody back in San Francisco? His what, Wi-Fi must be horrible. What is going on? He's got the always got one. that cloudy. <laughs> Veil look to it. She's got a flip phone. I don't know what's going on with her. No, bitch. <laughs> no, they don't. But... No, I put, I, I get bags under my eyes pretty bad. So I clean those up. Okay. And then I make my eyes a little bit brighter. But other than that, it's all lighting. I love it. And angles. Lighting and angles. Yes. I, I use And they those work wonders, too. right? Right. Yes. You know. Absolutely. I do the same thing. I've got my one window that's really great for shooting in the middle of the I day. I get made fun of. Because people are always like, you only have, you only shoot in front of this one place. Well, it's, <laughs> I know. So I'm starting to mix it up a little bit so that it, people don't just think, okay, the same yeah. living room background yeah. every single time. Your living room is fabulous, though. It's okay, but it's just, yeah, I just think we could mix it up a little bit. And truth be told, and honesty, yes. I... On Wednesdays, sometimes I'll do a promo for this show, uh -huh. and it'll be after I work out, and I'll do it shirtless. And I had somebody, a, a friend of mine, come in. He's like, ooh, I love Wednesday's pose. <laughs> I now know. And I thought, oh, okay. <laughs> Even though that was like a compliment, it was also like, oh, so we're expecting. So today, what did I do? I didn't post that. Oh, I know. Because I thought you showed his ass. I'm changing the mix up. <laughs> but sometimes people can, his honesty was complimentary, but I took it. I'm always looking for ways to improve. Yes. And I do not want to be stale and the same. Mine so. is on a Thursday. So, <laughs> okay. That's your, th that's your thirsty Thursdays. Every, Thursday, every Thursday. Thursday. So, yes. Um, and speaking of that, you can follow us on TikTok at Tags Podcast. Follow us on TikTok. Lastly, I want to just talk about have you ever fudged the truth a little bit or haven't been honest? And let's just talk about sex really quick. So sex. about the apps, I'll start first. Go. And on the apps, I want to say I'm pretty accurate with okay. my pictures. Yeah. It's, it's crazy, too, because I'll post pictures that look just like me or they're relatively new mm -hmm. showing everything and people will still want like more pictures yeah and i'm like you kind of that's like the thing and i don't want to go in circles like i just want like either you want to meet or you don't want to meet and that's okay. why i always say i don't do well have i ever fudged on uh honesty a little bit maybe i made my dick a little bit <laughs> <laughs> bigger longer it's a grower not a shower it's thicker than it is long but maybe i made it like eight and a half <laughs> by six and a half oh my god that's when it's maybe more wait, it's, it is the six and a half inches? but <laughs> no eight. Oh, maybe i'll make it eight and a eight point oh, five eight. times six point five. Oh, you add half an inch that's what i do not the second half yes not the six point five. Oh, oh damn Bitch, okay. I never knew. <laughs> she uh, got a beard listeners, here. I'm holding this mic right now. <laughs> but the but the eight and a half might be like I may have added a little half an inch. I definitely or had three half quarters an of an inch. Hey, it is but, what it is. Yeah. My driver's license says I'm five ten and I'm only five. Uh, we know you're oh. <laughs> <laughs> on a good day, we're five now, right? You know, no, in, in heels, I'm five ten. <laughs> heels, all right. Well, they, that's in true. Heels. They didn't ask. They didn't ask. Right. <laughs> they, they need to be more specific. I know, right? Yes. They need to, if they want to know, flat footed, how tall are you? Exactly. Okay, there you go. Five two and a yeah. half. Yeah. No. <laughs> but yeah, I think, yeah, but. In general, I think when you agree with age, makes you more honest and I agree. 100%. Less, yeah. What about in bed before before oh, we right. before we move on? When have I not been honest in yes. bed in terms you of have like a story? sex? Yes. Uh, when have I not been? I have. Oftentimes, you'll hear women say they faked it in uh -huh. bed. This and is what I'm getting at. I'm I glad have, you picked up on it. <laughs> I have with somebody that I really liked before because sometimes, not all the times. But sometimes it can take me a little longer to come. Okay. And I've just noted, 
I could tell this person like was so desperate to want me to come mm -hmm. with them fucking me. Mm -hmm. And it was making me mental that, I mean, I probably could have come if we had just taken a break yeah. and then maybe just, I had me jerk off, but I was just so much that I, I knew it wasn't going to suffice yeah. to say that. And they wanted me to physically come. So I just faked it. But I still enjoyed the experience. No, and I, then I just acted I like say one I word. just acted like I wiped it up, and then was like uh, out of breath. That is the point. Huffing like. and puffing, out of breath, and then was just like, oh, I have to use the bathroom, and ran to the bathroom <laughs> as if like I went to clean up, and I came back, and I was like, good to go. the The experience was so pleasurable. It's just that they, I felt, were so incessant and neurotic about me having to come yes. while they were doing it. It wasn't going to happen in my mind in the time frame that they would have liked yes and to me i got in my head and it was going to ruin the whole experience that it was easier to fake it till you bake, make it <laughs> and and i did a good I job and they that. believed me they believed you right yeah. you, you get best actress <laughs> <laughs> she is to that, to that. <laughs> have you so yes i wasn't very honest but i felt like it needed to i needed to lie on that one yeah of course i get it I have faked it too. <laughs> oh, have you? <laughs> really? Yes. I, again, I was, but I, my experience was not enjoyable. Okay. I really was not into it, but I never really have a problem getting hard. Right. So it looked like I was into it, but I really was not into it and I was not going to come. So I was just see, like, it's about the the pressure of ejaculation. My, and sometimes you're just not in. I just wasn't I will say I have been with people where I've just been like, oh, it's not going to happen right now, and that's cool. This was so hot. Yeah, and they're cool. I've been with there that. before too. Yeah, and but I'm I'm having a good time still. This one I was just not into it at all. But and you felt the need to fake it to me because it. I'm a nice person. <laughs> Are you? <laughs> Yeah, I am. He really is. So I felt like I had to fake it in order to make not it. make them feel bad about me not being into the experience. Because I would not like to explain that I was not into the experience. You better explain yourself, you see. <laughs> exactly. So, but when the thing is, like, you have to account for the come as if you're a man. I've been with guys before that they think that they come along and sometimes juices get lost up all in there with Girl. sweat. How would they even know? Well, I had a You know what I'm saying? I, I guess on. really. Oh, okay. So they were like, where's the cum at? And I was like. Oh, my God. See, that would have been so easy to fake. You would have just. All you had to have done is like grab it and go, I'm just going to throw this away. I'm not get bad. rid of this mess. I'm, I'm not, not that you were messy, baby. But I just, just want to get rid of the evidence. I'm not that smart when it comes to that. But um, I I told them that I had jacked off earlier, so. Okay. Oh, so then you. Then that's why that there wasn't a whole bunch of cum. There was actually none. <laughs> <laughs> Zero ejaculation. I was like, oh, I don't know. It must be. On you my probably spit more <laughs> on them than you did. I know. I've been, you probably spit more on I've me right now in this doing this, this episode like this time. than there was it's any pre cum. It's because your drinks are so delicious. I, I probably got more of a shower than that boy, poor boy did in that. I'm gonna time. go. I'm so sorry. Now, I, now I'm feeling self conscious again. Oh God, no! Please we don't. Screen right here anyways <laughs> look at how we turned vulnerable voices into a slutty hot mess i am all in a spit fest you enjoyed it, it i did i really did <laughs> all right well we've got to get on with the rest of the show um which one do you want to get to yes and i think see if there's any more in here thank you cody's asking for more cocktails i'm not <laughs> sure but i will we're almost done with the show so i will make him another one all right I think we have time for this TikToker okay, one, right? That's fabulous. I love that. One. Okay, so you, we are on TikTok right now at Tags Podcast, and so I'm always looking for stories about it. And there's this TikToker who accidentally exposed his penis, his dick, during. I don't want to say penis anymore. Yes, his cock. That's right. During a dance a, a stream. I know. I'm so like smack. <laughs> his cock. So, <laughs> so there's this twenty something who was trying to take advantage of this new trend. And you know how there's always these trends. What do they call them? I guess TikTok trends, right? Yeah. yeah. And he he did this whole dance like, thing in know. his I'm underwear. So this lad was <laughs> trying to nail a dance trend. And he, he was 
it, which is all about thrusting your crotch. And I'm not sure if the trend has you being in your underwear, but in this one, he was in his underwear. Mm -hmm. And the whole idea is thrusting. Well, he's quite like a twink body, right? He is. Lean, looks extremely young. And he's doing it, and he's thrusting, and as he's thrusting away, his dick slides out of his Calvin Klein floral print boxers. Yes. And clearly, like, he's got a room full of people that are filming it, and they're screaming in the background. And I have to say, you pointed this out, too. The dick was not small. It was pretty... I felt really guilty looking at this because I, he looks so young. I was like, wait a minute now. I need to see his ID. I need to see what's going on because I need to know if I can look at him. The guy couldn't have looked more him. nerdier and younger in except for the fact that, I mean, he looks like a little boy in yes, many ways. It's exactly. kind of freaky that He's in these underwear, and then his dick comes and out. And then his dick comes out. But it's... I mean, is it's, he... I think he's probably 18, he, I hope. He has to be. In, in my head canon, he's 18. He so, has to be, yeah. But his dick is pretty big. And it's you, pretty big. People need to weigh in on this and let me know. Well, he clearly was on. freaking out that it came out, yeah. and the screams in the background are hilarious. I will post this on Tags Podcast. A lot of videos to watch this week. Yes. But I have to ask you, Cody, have you ever had a malfunction where you exposed a little bit more than you wanted to? I have to say no. I was search. I've been searching my mind this entire time, and you I better search deeper. <laughs> <laughs> and while I have been naked in public several times, it's always been. You just need more alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, darling. Uh, I've. It's always been purposefully that I've done it, and okay. I need to stop saying p words because that's what I tend to say. <laughs> And the more alcohol they come out, <laughs> yes, but it's Slut stuttery. Exactly. Um, so it, it's always been purposefully that I've done that I've been nude in public. Okay. So, what about you? Well, I was thinking about this, and as a, it's funny because he's thrusting in his underwear, uh -huh. and I definitely remember this time in the '90s um, when I was a go-go dancer, which I've said before on the show, mm -hmm. and. There was this trend that we adopted from Bangkok, which was called the towel dance. Oh, which yeah. was this whole thing. We'd we get on a platform, dance, and be in our G string, our thong, and or maybe go go shorts, go down to our thong, and then ultimately go down, put a towel, a white towel. It had to be a white towel. Ew. You know, because that creates the whole mood. Oh, yeah. I know. Put the white towel around and then. T Clearly, visibly remove your undergarments, your jock strap, and ex you were naked. But yeah. and you could do all kinds of fun stuff, like put it in front just to expose your ass. Uh -huh. But I would do this thing where I would get too comfortable. Maybe one too mar margarita. One. Too well, have another drink. <laughs> one too many margaritas. There it is. Thank you. And I would bend over and my friends and i'll never forget i was in a contest where okay. i was doing this where i ultimately won Ooh, and I wonder why. friends of mine were in the audience and i was doing this towel dance and being trying to be all sexy mm -hmm. and i'm bending over and my friends later say do you know that every single time you bend over we can see your balls and your dick from the other side <gasps> and that's why you truth be to. told my balls are a little bit lower hanging okay. and my friends we're making all these jokes later like those donkey balls are like <laughs> we can see that whole thing you think you're hiding everything and you're not hiding anything i'm learning so many good and things i was about embarrassed <laughs> but also like well it won me the prize that's so, right bitch you better be you know, proud <laughs> didn't get me censored i won the prize i forget it was a cash prize of not a hundred thousand dollars, I wish it was. Come on, RuPaul. It may Drag have Race. been fifty bucks if I was lucky, and a bar tab, which was like well alcohol. That's awesome. But I bought those drinks for everybody That's and right. took that fifty bucks and paid my way home. A drink is a drink. <laughs> a drink is a drink is a drink. <laughs> We're about to have more drinks, but before we go, we got to have weigh in on our favorite topic of every Wednesday night. It's called yes. thirst trap. This comes out on Thursday, so it's Thursday Thirst Trap. It's always sponsored by Straight Up Gay Porn, one of our favorite sites, and they always do a great job. And this week, it's 19 gay porn stars asking the question, who took the best photo 
or video. Cody, I got to ask you, who is your favorite? So I'm scrolling for you, so <laughs> you can you can do it on your own over here. But who's oh, your oh, uh, thank you, Zach. Yes, all of them are amazing. Are they okay? So there's so many good ones. Yeah, we lost it. Who is your favorite? My favorite is Christian Styles and Yes Braun. Christian Styles it was your favorite, and, and why? Yes Braun, because it's a video number one, and you can see and. Immediately when the video comes on, you see Christian's face uh -huh. and his mouth is wide open. Oh, there yes. I love right this there. video. <laughs> well, okay. So it's in, it's hard to tell because so it's Christian Styles is the face. It's the face. So guys, and yes, uh, let me Braun, help him out a little bit. His tongue is out like he's about to lick the best lollipop ice cream that he's ever had in his life yes, I was, yes. Oh, okay go ahead <laughs> yeah I, and he i was <laughs> and he his mouth is just wide open and his his tongue is out and you see <sighs> whoa, <laughs> whoa. <laughs> you that's, may have heard that that's gonna be in the audio <laughs> and you see yes bronze cock in the shot too I said cock, I didn't say penis. Um, <laughs> Thank you. And then just immediately, Yes Braun just erupts all over Christian's face. Yes. And all you do is hear Yes Braun moan out of pure, unadulterated pleasure. And it's amazing. And cum is flying everywhere. It's all over his face. And Christian looks happy as a pig in slop. Pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> wow, and that's you, really. And you get to see his cute and furry butt, and it's it's just, I, I'm. It's wanted, everything. It I is kind of everything. Off in the bathroom, but I did not. <laughs> <laughs> the cum shot is really good. Yeah. He clearly was not faking it and being honest that he day. He was not faking the person. It. <laughs> no, really good one. You can account for the cum in this video. Absolutely. Sure. Again, we want you to weigh in as well. Let us know who's your, your favorite. favorite. Mine really was John Clyde. Oh, I follow him on, it's, on Twitter. Yeah, you were. It was funny. As I was going to run out and get my sushi as you were taking your overextended notes, <laughs> your, your biography for this podcast, <laughs> I was like, oh, who is he talking about? Well, it turned out it was my favorite. And oh. the reason why... He, he's very beefy in this. He's super sexy. It's hard to wear like a t-shirt mm -hmm. and you know he's got a great body under that and looks super sexy, but he's got this great, you know, mustard colored t-shirt on. And then when you scroll down, he's clearly in the bathroom. His dick is so thick. Yes. And I just went with it because... He's so cute. He's too. super cute. And if you go to his... Twitter account, which is how I often vote, which is really not part of the <laughs> and he rules. Went to the, he went to the Twitter account. Just, well, let me just we're explain. We're looking at it now. Yeah, let me explain. To, yeah, we're looking at it now. You're seeing my process. <laughs> and essentially what I always like about it is straight up gay porn does a good job of putting up, the, if it's the 19 who took the hottest photos of the week, uh -huh. they also then put a link and it's always to their Twitter accounts. You get to see them outside of it. And yes. I treat it like Miss America. Oh. Or or when I ran for Mr. Leather. It's not one contest. You go up three times. Okay. There's a QA. Yes. So we don't get the QA on even here. Gown, swimsuit. No. So this is my <laughs> these are the other portions of what I'm judging on. And in he, all of them, he's I love a he good clearly pair of great wants legs. World peace in that first picture. He does. <laughs> he's it's all about the bolts for him. And it's all about the bulge. And I'm a size queen, truth be told. Yes. And if it's straight on that, I'm voting for him. I love it. You can weigh in by going to tagspodcast.com. Don't forget, write in, ask for sex or solicited relationship advice, and we will give it to you. You can DM us at Tags Podcast or email us. And for a limited time, we're giving away, I don't know if you can grab that toy box over there below, but oh, a toy okay. I will send you from adamstoybox.com where you already get 20% off all toys. Look at this toy box. Um, they're all in here. Yes. There's some goodies. I'm, so I'll let you. Cody's going to check it out. Um, all new live shows next week. Check us out. More advice given. Um, you can follow Cody 
at Mr. Maurice, and he's a life coach at KMD Coaching. And Cody, this is always so fun. So much fun. In the same room, too. It's a different dynamic, right? Yes, for sure. I love it. It's always so much fun with you. So thank you. Check out the merch while it's still hot and ready. Go to Tags Podcast and go to Tags Merch. And in the meantime, continue having hot Hot gay gay sex. sex. Yes. Yes.